What is your immigrant experience? Especially when it comes to the basic things that you need to take care of when you first arrive in a new country. How do you decide on what needs your immediate attention for you to be able to survive on your first month of um, arrival in the new country? And what can wait for you to settle down? Welcome to Immigrant Stories of Resilience, a channel where we share immigrant experiences and offer tips to newcomers. In today's episode, I'll share with you transportation, guys, how we learned to move around without a vehicle, how we learned to use uh, public transport, having come from a system where I was so used to, you know, I'm going somewhere, get the car key, hop into a vehicle and go to that place. But now in Canada, let me tell you a story about our experience with transportation and the children detested taking a bus, you know, in the initial days, they were always like, oh, when you sold our vehicles back home, you said we would buy a car when we get to Canada. And you know, they are too young for you to start telling them like, <laughs> the money that we have, we have to keep it for food until we get to these jobs that we were told about. So we really had to learn how to use public transport in this new city and learn to get to places with that mind of them. Um, because we came to Canada under the professional category and we had been told there are jobs waiting for us. So we had to learn how to use public transport so that we can access the jobs and start earning dollars. So each morning or every time when we hoped in, onto public transport, especially in the morning and in the evenings, getting into a crowded bus where you now get to see like um, a small city inside a bus. In the bus, there will be people from all walks of life. If you are keen enough, you start hearing different languages. And um, there is this new thing about uh, buses keeping time compared to Kenya where public transport, you just go to the road and wait for a matatu. It's not a guarantee that it will come or other times you just get to the road and you find a matatu, and other times, if the matatu sees you from far, if it's not full, it will wait for you. And then coming from there into a system where the bus keeps time to the minute, if not to the second. So if you get to the bus stop one minute late, you'll see the bus leaving. So we had to learn all that within very few days because we needed to get to specific places, one of them being to go and get the jobs that brought us to Canada. Yes, we were told Canada, there are jobs waiting for you. So we needed to get there. We quickly learned how to fit into this adventure of uh, public transportation. And now it was like, wake up in the morning, prepare the children, walk them to school, and be on time to catch the bus so that we could also go to our school. Yes, we started going to school. This could be a whole episode, but the summary is that um, when we now started looking for these jobs that we were told about, we realized that we needed to learn a few things about Canada, like the Canadian workplace, the culture of the Canadian workplace, how to write, how to convert your CV into a resume. And we were told that the fastest way for us to learn these things, that's the Canadian culture, way of life and workplace, was they are set up institutions for immigrants. So we found one of these schools, and it's a story for another day, but we also started unraveling this mystery of travel because you need to know the bus number and the direction it's going because it's the same number that can go that way. And as you are traveling frontwards in one specific number, you will see another bus, the same number traveling the opposite direction. So when you go to a new area, just to learn about their transportation system and then <laughs> learn also on how to pay bus fare. Because the first week, the first time after we had been 
uh, told about the destination where we were going to and given the number of the bus to pick and where to change, we get into the bus and hand over a $10 bill to the driver. <laughs> okay, I can now laugh about it. But you know, when the driver looks at you and um, tells you like, you need tokens or you need a bus pass and... <laughs> And in your mind, you start questioning, like, what are these? Because where you've come from in Kenya, it's um, it used to be cash. Okay, nowadays, when I go, I see people paying using the M-Pesa. That's a uh, mobile money. But when we left Kenya, it was cash, cash, cash. You pay with cash. So you give the conductor cash and they give you change. So without them here, yeah, it was different. So... The driver had to let us off at the next stage and asked us to go and get change or to go and get tokens or to go and get a bus pass. Partly because we we were a long way to our destination. The bus that we took was to get us to the train station. And then from there, we were to get into a train, which would take us to many stations ahead. And then from there, we were to get out of that um, train and i think we used to go like one or two floors below underground we are still underground in the train and change like you could change from the yellow line to the blue line which we again took and took us to another central bus station from where we now took a bus to the adult school where we were attending our classes which means that um, when you take the first bus if you are using tokens to pay then you are given a receipt of proof of payment so that you can now transfer maybe to another bus or to another train. And it used to be that um, you could use the same payment receipt. I think it used to be like 60 minutes or 90 minutes. So you could change buses and change trains with the same fare that you had paid. Guys, I was like, ah, this is good life. Because back in Kenya, it's like you pay in one matatu where you are going to. You pay the amount that takes you from point A to B. And if you are going to point D, then you get into another matatu, B to C, and you pay, and then you pay again C to D. So I was like, oh, this is so nice. You pay once and you get to your destination. So that's the short story of... Um, how we learned to travel in public transport. And as we always say, once beaten, twice shy. And as we always say in Kiswahili, kupoteanjia ndio kujua njia, which translates to once you get lost once, like on a route, then it's like you now learn that route. You can never forget and get lost again on the same route. Yeah, so that's... Uh, a short story on how we learned about the local transportation system and very quickly became experts at it. We could travel to our adult school, you know, without missing any of the trains or the buses and back home. Because what we had learned was that um, when you go to a new place, that's in the city where we were, the easiest way not to, go, to get lost is that... Um, on your way back, you now cross the road and take the bus the same number that you took coming. It will take you like from our adult school. If our next stop was um, the train station, then that bus will take you there. And when you get off your last train, you go and get a bus going the opposite direction from where you came in the morning. Same number, it will uh, get you there. Nowadays, when I think of, um, you know, how we used to travel, the hurry, sometimes I feel like I'm getting dizzy because I'm like, oh, how did you manage all that? Hopping out of a bus into a train, things that we had never done before because I came from a transportation system where if I went to the road to take a matatu, it means I was going maybe to town and I was not in a hurry, but on a work day, I drove to work, so I just saw my tattoos on the road. And here I was now being the passenger in this uh, public transport. But um, it was good in that uh, I got to learn something new. 
And for the children, for the first time, they got to learn, you know, how to get into uh, public transport, which has become of uh, much benefit now that they are grown, now that they are able to move around on their own. And talking about our adult school, I need to tell you something about that. So as part of what we did on our first 30 days in Canada, in a new country and in a new city. So talking about the adult school, I've mentioned above what we were doing there. It's learning about the Canadian culture, Canadian workplace. And attending that school, you know, made me feel like I wasn't alone because you go to this institution and there are so many newcomers, so many immigrants who are there to learn about the Canadian culture before they can get to the Canadian workplace. So, and what uh, gave me energy was that uh, the promise of jobs and we were like, oh, just spending three months learning about the Canadian culture, Canadian workplace, so that we can now go and start these jobs that we were told about. So you are like, oh, it's okay, I'll do that. And also sitting in uh, these classes where, because we had people of so many immigrants of so many levels, sitting with them and as we are learning, because we used to be taught and then given assignments, most of which were comprehension. You know, you are given a document to read maybe about a specific episode and you are asked how you would react or you are shown in a Canadian uh, culture or workplace what's expected of you in such a situation. And sometimes we also watched uh, videos after which we had to answer questions. So maybe based on my background, I found some of these um, assignments quite straightforward because reading, understanding and answering questions But then I could look at um, other students in class still struggling with their assignment, asking questions. And I was like, oh, Eileen, you are steps, many, many steps ahead. See, there are people here struggling. There are some people, immigrants who are at the same adult school. And after that, they would be like, oh, after here, I'm hurrying to go for my ESL classes. And these are... Classes that uh, where people learn English as a second language, ESL. Yeah. So yeah, when I could encounter such people, then you know it made me feel like oh, even if you don't speak with a Canadian accent, at least you can hear most of the things. You understand most of the things that people are saying. You can answer questions. You speak the language, even though it's a different accent. You speak the language. So. That gave me a lot of motivation to keep on. Remember, guys, we are doing all this because of the jobs that uh, brought us over. And um, I've not checked uh, uh, about the schools nowadays, but when we came, they were free. So the only cost that we had to incur was uh, transportation. And if we needed lunch, even though most of the classes ran from morning up to lunchtime, then after that you could go home. But it was again a chance for me to start uh, venturing into Canadian foods and acquire a new taste. But uh, stay tuned. I'm going to tell you about that uh, in a brief moment. But what happened was that uh, after attending the classes and um, doing the assignments, then it was time to run back. Remember, there is no nanny to go and pick the children from school. So retract my steps or the buses all the way back to our apartment or to the children's school so that after that I could show them the way back to their new home. That's uh, our apartment because they were still new to the area. There is no way they would be knowing where this, uh, the location of the apartment. I don't know. I'm just saying that. But as I said, kids are very clever. Kids pick up things very fast. So maybe they knew how to get back from their school to our new home. Maybe it's something that I need to ask them soon. Since we are still talking about um, transport and uh, finding our way home, I would like to say something about um, the goodness of strangers. Yes, yes, strangers are very important people, especially when you are in a new place, when you are in a new country. So I relied a lot or we relied a lot on the help of uh, strangers. While traveling on the initial days, you know, when you are in a new place 
And especially as um, snow started to clear, and with that, it cleared the landmarks that um, I knew because we came in winter and we started knowing places by landmarks. That's uh, what we did in Kenya. You know, when you're directing somebody somewhere, especially in rural areas, you'll always tell somebody like, oh, you go and when you get to this hill or when you come to a tree, this species of tree, which is this big, then you go ahead a little bit and you turn left. So when I came, one way of knowing where I was going to was I had specific landmarks, buildings or a mountain of snow. But as it started to clear, then it means it was like I needed to start all over again. So this is where the goodness of strangers again came back because um, I could get into a bus and just tell the driver, like, I would like to get off at such and such a place, but I don't know where it is. Please drop me off there. And the goodness of strangers, you could be seated in that bus and it gets somewhere just before it stops. You would hear a driver call out the name of that place. And immediately, because I was always very keen, immediately I would know that that message is for us. That message is for me. And with that, vacate my seat and get ready to uh, get off at the station. And always remember to thank the driver as you're getting out. And also many a time, still on the goodness of strangers, I could get into a bus and just tell somebody like, oh, I'm going to such and such a place. Please, do you know this area? And people are very good. Human beings are very good. They would be like, oh, yeah. Then you explain, I'm new to this place. Please alert me uh, maybe one stop before so that I can get ready. And surprise, surprise, you'll get to the person telling you like, oh, now you can... After this stage, the next one, you can ring the bell because that's what we do here in buses. You ring the bell so that the driver knows that there's somebody who would like to get off and they'll stop at the next uh, stop. Yeah, so I relied quite a lot on strangers and I'll be telling you more about it when I talk about food and when I talk about um, social relations. Yes, you need food on your first day, your first month of arrival to a new place. And how are you going to access food? And what is food to you? So we've talked enough for now about um, transportation in in my new city, my new country. So my adventures. So for you, before I move on to the next um, item, but for you, what's your experience with the transport when you moved to a new place as an immigrant? Was it the same as in your country of origin or how different was it? So you can share, comment below and share your experience on um, transport. Was it an adventure? Was it annoying or how what was your reaction to the whole thing learning how to move from point a to b to c in the new place i would like you to share below and tell us what you considered important what you did that's the first time when you arrived in a new city in a new country and why did you decide to do that so comment below and subscribe because i have many more stories to share i have a ton of stories about um my migrant experience and later on I'll be later on I'll be interviewing guests so that they can also share their experience and also give you tips on how to survive in a new place. So there's more to come. Subscribe below so that um, you'll be among the first people to be informed whenever I have a new episode. So until the next episode, go out there and live life. That's what I call an adventure. You're an adventure seeker. Until the next episode, it's a goodbye from me. Bye-bye.